Welcome to LabMiz.com. In this video, we will look at span and ER span functionalities in Cisco Nexus 1000V. Switchport Analyzer or span, as most of you are already familiar with, allows packets to be replicated and captured in the same switch. And this is available on pretty much every Cisco switches. Encapsulated Remote Switchport Analyzer or ER span, on the other hand, allows packets to be replicated and transported across multiple layer 3 hops for capture using GRE encapsulation. And this is only available as of the day on certain Cisco switches model, while Cisco Nexus 1KV is one of them. So here's our lab setup. On the physical topology, we have two ESXi server, ESXi1 and ESXi2. Each has two NIC uplinks to a upstream switch. And we are running VSM on a layer 3 mode. And both VSM and the VMs are sitting behind the VEM. When we're going to be testing our packet capture, we're going to be using FTP as a test application. So on the logical topology side, we have an FTP server at the IP of dot 40 on VLAN 32, an FTP client on the IP of dot 100 in the same VLAN. Now for the packet capture machine, we have a Wireshark install. And for the first half of the video, when we test the span configuration, we're going to have it con uh, directly connected to the Nexus 1KV. And then later on, when the test ER span, we're going to move it one hop away to our physical uplink switch and have it connected to a switch one. And the machine is going to be on a totally different subnet on VLAN 64. Okay, so let's start with our configuration. So here we have the CLI of the VSM. And just like when you configure any monitor session on physical switches, you need to identify the source and destination interface, so where the traffic is coming from and where you want to replicate it to. Now since we're doing with the virtual machine here, so we first we need to identify the source machine. Here we're going to capture the port where the FTP client is connected to. And we know the name contains 2008. So what we're going to do is show interface virtual, probably include 2008. And right here, this is our FTP client at the VE11. So that will be our source interface. Now for the destination interface where our packet capture machine is connected. The packet capture machine has the name with the bin 7 in it. So right here, so the destination will be VE15. Okay, now we can configure our monitor session. And now we need to specify the session ID between 1 to 64. Now we choose 1. Here we can specify the source and destination. So for the source, question mark, you have an option of interface, port profile, or VLAN. Here we're doing interface, type VETH. And you can also do Ethernet, port channel, and VEthernet. Versus VEthernet 11, which is our source interface. Now for the destination, you have an option of interface and port profile. We do interface. And again, our destination is VE15. Any question mark? One other option that you can also do is filter. So for example, if you perform a packet capture on a dot one q trunk and you would want to, or you're only, only interested in traffic on certain VLAN, you can apply the VLAN filter right here and you specify what VLAN you want to see the traffic. So you don't have to really capture everything across that trunk. Okay, but here we're dealing with access port, so we do no need for that. Last thing we need to do is no shut to make the session active. And now if you do show monitor, you will see right here session is up. And if you do show monitor session one, it tells you the source interface is VE11, destination is VE15, and without any filter apply. Okay, so with that configured we can now jump to our packet capture machine and we have Wireshark install and start the capture. So select the interface and click start. And we also have an RDP session going on here to the FTP, FTP client. And you can see once we move around, we start capturing packets. And if you pick one of those packet capture, you can see port 3389, which is the TCP port for RDP. So we have started our capture. Now let's go ahead and do the FTP. Now we connected by FTP and let's download one of the file that we have. It's the Nexus config file in clear text. Click OK and then we'll jump back real quick. Stop the capture. We'll scroll up and you can see here is FTP data. And if you follow TCP stream, you can actually see the whole content of the file since it was transmitted in clear by FTP. And this pretty much verify that our monitor session is working. Okay, so the next thing I want to try is to vMotion the FTP client machine to a different ESXi host. So right here, if we go migrate, 
change hose, hit dot six, next, go and click finish. While it's happening, let's go back here and continue our packet capture. So we say continue without saving, let's clear the filter. And let's just move around over here in our RDP session. And you can see the packet is still being captured in the background here. So we're just ha gonna have to wait for the V motion to complete. Okay, looks like our V motion is almost complete. We'll see in a minute here what's gonna happen. So let's still move around and make sure. All right, V motion is completed. And in the background here, you can see it doesn't matter how much activity we generate this RDP session is not, the packet is not being captured anymore. So if we go back to now switch and do show monitor session. And now you can see the state has become down and this is because the source and destination mismatch. What it means is basically the Nexus 1000 V has a requirement that the source and destination of the span or monitor session needs to be in the same host. Just because we V motion the source, which is the FTP client machine to a different host from the destination, which is the packet capture machine, the whole monitor session just break. Okay, so when you do a span or monitor session locally, make sure both source and destination are on the same physical ESXi host. So as the workaround that brings us to the second section of this lab, which is ER span. Since the destination, which is the, cap the packet capture machine is on a different host, what we can do here is to create an ER span session to have the packets sent directly across the subnet to our packet capture machine. Okay, so let's do that. First, let's clear the monitor session. One, we pretty much know where the source is because after V motion, the V ethernet interface number never changed. So right here we still, for the source is still V eth 11. But now for the destination, instead of specifying the interface, it's gonna be the IP of the, the packet capture machine. So the way this is gonna work is the VEM where the source machine is located. In this case, it's our ESXi2 here. It's going to replicate the traffic and then encapsulate it inside the GRE packet. And then we use its layer three control interface and send that directly to the destination packet capture machine. So it is a requirement for you to, if you're not doing layer three control interface on the VEM, then you need to create a specific VM kernel interface on the ESXi host and then come up with the port profile. Let me show you what we have right now. So if we do show run port profile, we call it VMK control. And this is the same interface we are currently using since we're running VSM layer three mode. So this is the interface that, uh, the port profile that VEM is using to communicate across layer three to the VSM. So if you do not have this configured already like we do, then you would need to create this particular port profile and attach it to or assign it to the VM kernel interface on each of the ESXi hosts. But since we have this configured already, again, I just want to show you on here, if you go to configuration, networking, and vSphere distributed switch, and let's look for that particular right here, VMK control. You can see the control interface has the IP of 172.16.113.6. That's where the traffic will be coming from or the source IP of the GRE encapsulated traffic, which we'll see in a minute here. So this is very important if you do not have the capability layer three control configured already. Okay, now that we have that, we can monitor, create a monitor session. Again, use ID one, but if you do question mark here, you have an opportunity to specify the type and an option of ER span. Okay, for, so for the source interface, like I mentioned, it never changed, so it's still VETH 11. But for the destination, if you do question mark, and since they have being an interface, a port profile has become an IP. And now we have to specify the IP of the packet capture machine. So let's identify the IP of this with the kind of IP config. And here it has an IP of 64.34. And let's make sure that we can ping the control interface of the VEM where it's coming from, just a quick sanity check. So we said it's a 113.6, I believe. You can see we can ping that. So the destination is going to be 1664.34. Let's make sure that's what it was one more time. Otherwise it may not work. So 64.34, great. Okay, enter. 
And then there's actually a lot more options that you can do. So let's go through that one by one. First thing you want to specify is the ER span ID. It's basically just additional tag that again we will see in a second here for the receiver, uh, the package capture host to identify among different ER span traffic or sessions. We're just going to keep it consistent with our local monitor session number, which is one. The filter option is still there. Now we have an IP and question mark. You can specify for QoS purposes, DSCP or precedence, as well as the how far you want the traffic, uh, the packets to, to travel by specifying the TTL value in the header. So let's go ahead and do IP DSCP. Let's say we want EF, which is 46. Again, this may or may not be something you want to do in your network since EF is usually prioritized in QoS world. And for IP TTL, let's give it some random number, let's say five, and then we can no shut. And if you do show monitor, you can see now state is up, session is up, and you can see some activity in the background already immediately. So now the VM basically takes the traffic that it captures from the FTP client host inside GRE and then send it directly to the packet capture machine. So while that is running, let's try the FTP one more time. So let's grab that same file and OK. Now let's stop and take a quick look. So you can see for every packet that is being received by the packet capture machine, the machine replies with ICMP destination and reachable. So just to kind of filter off the noise, we can do ER span, uh, span ID equal to one because that's the session ID, uh, span ID number that we specify during the minor session configuration. On top of that, we also do not want to see ICMP packet. So not ICMP, enter. You can see it's, we kind of cleaned that up a little bit here. And just to randomly pick a packet, well actually let's find out FTP packet first, right here, FTP data. You can do pretty much the same thing as what we did before with the span. And you can see we can pretty much see the, the whole file content again. Now just to look at what we have here, let's pick that same packet and take a look at the content. So the first thing you notice is there's a GRE header right here, but it's also an, an outer IP header with the source being the VEM control interface 113.6 and the destination being IPFL packet capture machine, which is the 64.34. Now if you expand that and see, this is the DSCP field. And since we specify it to be EF, you can see it's, it's been marked by expedited forwarding as it's shown right here. And the other thing you want to note here is time to live is four, since originally the packet has TTL of five and it travel one hops across from 32, VLAN 32 to 64, it lost one. So that's why TTL has become four. If you keep going down, there's the GRE header, and inside the header, it has the protocol type, and ER span has that particular protocol ID. So that's why the Wireshark knows is type ER span, and there's also additional header for the ER span packet analysis itself, and this is where the span ID is embedded in. So VLAN 32 and span ID 1. The rest of it is just it's basically the original packet that was encapsulated inside GRE. So start off here is the Ethernet frame, and then you got IP and TCP header and FTP data itself. Okay, so it's pretty interesting to look at when you see right here, it's just the packet encapsulated inside GRE. Okay, so the last thing that we want to do is to move this particular host because so far our packet capture host remains behind the VEM. So what we're going to show right now is to move it to the upstream physical switch. And you will see in a second here that it's just kind of new to work. So the way to do that for us is we're just going to use the same VM, but instead we're going to use a different NIC uplink that is directly connected to the upstream switch. So right here, VLAN 64. Just to confirm, we do show interface virtual and look for Win 7. We do not see that anymore since it's been moved upstream. And we can continue the capture and you can see if you moved around an RDP session or even let's try and copy that again one more time and you can even put the filter that we put earlier on apply 
you can see things continues to work right here, even though our packet capture machine is now on the upstream switch. Okay, so even if this particular host is multiple layer three hops away, it will continue works as long as the distance or number of hops is less than the TTL that you specify under the monitor session. Okay, so you can see the span works as long as the source and destination remains in the same host. But as, as soon as that's not the case, things tends to break. And then the work around that is to use ER span where you can have pretty much the destination anywhere in the network as long as it's routable. So that pretty much wraps up our video on Nexus 1000V span and ER span features. Thank you for watching labmates.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.